Hi there, it's Simon Hurley from Inclipse and welcome to another video. Thank you so much for stopping by. Now, a little while back in my card making life hacks, I shared quickly how to create a DIY Gamsol marker for blending and a lot of people really loved the idea. So today I'm going to be kind of going more in depth on that, sharing how I created it once again and then sharing lots of examples on how to blend using it. Now here is a colored pencil. I'm just laying down a thin layer of Prismacolor pencil really quickly here kind of just scribbling it on, and then I'm going to be using Gamsol to blend it out. Now this is the Inky Antics Gamsol, and I like this little bottle because it has that sponge applicator top, so in case if you are using these paper stumps like this, you can always dip it inside there, and it makes it really easy to blend nicely. So I'm taking my paper stump just to share kind of how you could blend using these, and I'll blend right over top of it, and you do get a smoother blend. However, I really struggle with it dipping it back inside of there and having to sand it down and then redo it, and it just takes a little bit longer to blend this out. And I also wanted to create a little marker that was nice and portable so I can take it on the go and color around my house, or if I'm going somewhere and wanting to travel with it, it's easily portable and more travel-sized. So I grabbed this alcohol ink blending pen, this is footage from the other video, and I like this because it has that fine point as well as the brush nib too. So this makes it a really nice marker to add the blending solution and Gamsol on the inside. So you have to pull out the brush nib side in this marker and it comes empty. So this is a refillable blending pen. And then I'll take the Gamsol bottle, like I said I like this one from Inky Antics, but you can really use whatever Gamsol you want. And I'll pop the top off of this, so I'm going to take that little sponge applicator off of here. So just slide your thumbs under there or grab a pliers and just slip it out from underneath there. So then you have this open top and I'll grab a syringe and grab a little bit of the Gamsol and then you could apply it right inside of your marker in that little tiny area there. Now this marker recommends that you don't overfill it, so start off with a little bit inside this marker. Don't overfill it too much or it will start kind of overflowing and you don't want that to happen. So you want to kind of go a little bit at a time and test it out as you go. Then I'll apply back on that brush nib there and then I'm going to set my marker on its side like this for a little while and let it sit there. And here are the results you get. So I'm going to scribble down a little bit of color onto my paper just like I did earlier and I'll bring in the blending pen here. I'm gonna use the brush nib side here, and you can see immediately when you touch it down onto the paper, the pigment starts to kind of melt and lighten and really turn a brighter color here, and it really blends together super nicely, and I really like this, like I said, because it's super portable, so you could take it on the go as you're coloring and still get really smooth colored effects. Now when the nib is kind of dark and stained like that, you can wipe, wipe off the excess color off to the side on a scrap piece of paper, but it still might be a little bit stained and that's okay. Uh, none of the color will come off after you scribble it out. Now for the coloring in today's video, I'm using the Hearts and Flowers Stamp TV Kit. I think this is just genius. It comes with two 6x8 big stamp sets, which is awesome. And these images are great for coloring and stamp layering and there's lots of different images to choose from in here and I really love these sets. And then they also have matching dies as well, and I like that they also cut out not just the images but the words. And then you also get lots of Gina's cardstock as well, and I love this stuff in all the colors as well as the really awesome quality of the cardstock, and it's what I use every day. So for this first card here, I'm going to be creating this rose kind of floral bunch card, and I'll do lots of coloring in here. So I'll stamp this down in my Misty just because it's kind of a larger image and I find really good results here. So I'll take my clear mark ink pad, which is a clear sticky ink, and I'll ink it up first. And then after that, I'm going to stamp it right down onto the card there. And I'll lift it back up, and then since it's going to stamp in the exact same spot, I'm going to ink it up with black ink as well and stamp it down. Now this makes it so that it's a black sticky surface, so it'll hold down that embossing powder there, which is really nice. And I'm just using clear embossing powder here, but it'll make it look like I embossed it with black embossing powder. So when I heat set this, it turns nice and shiny, and that way when I color over top of this, the lines won't dull because of the colored pencils, and you get really crisp results. 
Now to start off my coloring here, I'm taking this really dull blue color and coloring it right over that mason jar image there because I just want a bluish tint because of the water that's going to be inside of there. And I'll go in with my blender marker that we created and blend that all out so it creates that really subtle look there. Um, and it's not too vibrant, but it, you can definitely tell that it's there and it's nice and blended out. Then for these flowers, I'm going to go in and really quickly just scribble some color right inside the flower. And you can see there that it does some really nice blending, even though I didn't apply that color really thick. I'm just applying a little bit of the color where I want it to be kind of shadowed, and then blending it out with my marker here. And later on, I'll share how to kind of shade them in even more if you want darker results as well. So then I'll go in with my leaf areas here, and I'll just kind of blend those together. Now to get really smooth and nice blending like this, I find that cardstock is pretty important to make sure that the colored pencils are moving on it. So I find that Nina 110 pound cardstock works nicely, but today I'm using the Gina K um, layering weight cardstock that came inside of the kit. And this stuff blends like a charm as well, and it works really well for smooth coloring, which I think is awesome. So be sure to check this stuff out as well, and it does come along inside this kit. So then I'll quickly just continue blending all these flowers together. And like I said, it doesn't take much time at all. You can see kind of how quick I'm going through this here. It is a little bit sped up, but all you need to do is just quickly scribble in some of that color and the marker takes care of it all for you. So since you can take this on the go now, since the Gamsol marker is in there, you just need some of your colored pencils and you can really quickly get some really nice smooth blending without having to take the whole Gamsol bottle along with you. Now for the darker shading that I had, if you want to add a little bit more dimension, you can come back in with another colored pencil that's a little bit darker than the shade that you used earlier. And you can just shade the areas where you think it would be a little bit darker there, kind of on the inside of the flower. And then blend that out with your Gamsol marker as well. And this creates a nice depth dimension kind of look there. And you can keep coming back in with that color and layer it up until you have the desired result that you want. And I think that looks really nice once you're finished. So now to finish off this card, I'm going to tape down the coordinating die here and do some partial die cutting so that part of the image can be cut out detailed with that coordinating die. So I'll stick in the portion with the flowers on top there that I want to be cut out, and I'll leave part of the vase sticking out at the bottom, which will be the part that won't be cut. So anything underneath this cutting plate is going to cut out, and I'll show you how that works in just a second here. So once that's complete, I can run it through my die cutting machine here, and anything that's outside of there didn't cut, and anything that was inside cut with that nice coordinating die. So you'll see I have a nice area at the bottom there where it lines up, and I'm gonna bring in my slider trimmer here from Fiskars, and I'm just gonna cut right alongside of there until I hit that mark where it had already cut out with the coordinating die. And this kind of releases that top portion and makes it so that it's nice and detailed cut out, and then this bottom kind of stays along with it. So then I'm going to stamp down the sentiment along with it. I'll use some of that clear sticky ink as well as the black ink here to match the image. And then I'll stamp it down right below it so that it says thinking of you. And this image I'm going to then heat emboss as well so that it matches the image above and it looks just perfect and coordinates nicely together. So I'll heat this up until it turns nice and clear then. And then I'm going to add this onto a card base of some of that awesome cardstock that I came in the kit of Gina K's. And I'm using some foam tape to mount it on there. Now for this second card here, I'm using another one of the images from the Stamp TV kit here. And I'm going to color it in. This has a little bit more room in it though, so you can see some of that awesome blending that I did with a couple different colors. So I'm going to stamp this down using that clear sticky ink here. And then I'm going to go over top of it with the white heat embossing powder, and I'll tap off the excess there. Now if you miss a little area and you want it to be filled in, I'm going in with an embossing pen here from Nuvo, and just filling in that little line there, and nobody will ever notice. You can sprinkle back over some embossing powder, and nobody will know that, that you ever missed that. So then I'll heat this up until it turns a nice bright white color here. And once it's done, you're ready to start coloring your image in. And I think that this is really nice to have that white contrasting on top of this craft card stock. And it'll give a really vibrant line. So to start off my coloring here, I'm taking my darkest colored pencil that I'm going to use. So in this case, it's the red. And I'm going to add it right on the inside of each petal where it's going to be the darkest. And there's going to be a little bit more shading there. 
Now I'm not really taking my time to do this, I'm going pretty quickly in here, just kind of scribbling some of that color on, and laying down some colored pencil color. You'll see me going in with the orange here next, and I'll layer some colored pencil down as well. You could do this in different layers and blend in between with the game saw marker, but I find that adding all your color down quickly and then blending all together at the end makes go for a smoother blend and you can really quickly blend these three colors together. So I'm going to add that yellow in at the end here, which is a nice vibrant color on there. And then to finish this off for the leaves, I'll just throw down a little bit of green and again, just kind of scrib scribbling some of that color down. You don't need to make it super nice and smooth because when I bring in my DIY Gamsol marker, this will smooth everything out for you and create the nice blended effect you want. Now I do have to say when I'm going in with the blending marker here, it does make the paper a little bit wet. So as I'm going over the colors here, it does turn a little bit darker than it will when it dries. So just keep that in mind as you're coloring over top. So I'm going to go in here. You can wipe off some of the color if you find it starting to get muddy, but it really blends this color super nicely together and it really gives that super nice soft blend between these colors. And I really like how portable this marker is too and how easy it is to just wipe off the color and move right on into the next shade. So then I'll quickly blend together these leaves and then I'm finished with my blending and I'm ready to create my little background here. So I wanted to keep this super nice and simple. So for the background, I'm just taking kind of a light bluish gray kind of color and I'll just create little circles kind of around the image, shading in a little bit of that area around the white lines of the image. Now this creates just a little bit of depth on the image and gives it a little bit of a grounding place on the card for it to kind of sit there and make it look like it's supposed to be there. So after I've added that in, it's a little bit harsh, so I'm going in with the brush nib of this new blending marker here, and I'll blend out some of the color just to kind of soften the edge a little bit and make it blend a little bit more into that craft card stock there. You could also add different colors and blend them together, but I decided to keep it super simple there. And like I said, any of that dark colored craft cardstock will soften out as it dries. So then here I'm taping down that coordinating die once again. I'm going to run it through, but here this time I have this embossing mat down. And then I'll lay down my cardstock with the die and then the embossing plate through my Spellbinders machine here. Now this makes it so that it'll create a nice indent in that rubber mat there. And so it'll create a little indent of a debossed image there. So it just adds a little bit of texture to your card uh, where it would be otherwise rather simple. So I'll add that to a craft colored card base here from Gina. And then I'll stamp down the little hello friend sentiment here. And you can kind of build up your own sentiment which is nice and fun. And then I'll come in here with a white gel pen just to add a little bit of some dimension. And on every downstroke here, I'm just going to embellish the um, sentiment with a little bit of that white gel pen to make it stand out. And then I'll add a little bit of this shimmer pen from um, Tonic, which is the Aqua Flow Shimmer. And it just adds a little bit of sparkle and shine to the image. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit more about this Gamsol marker. I really love the marker and love the results you can get on the go when coloring with it. So here are two more videos from me on screen. Be sure to visit my blog as well. There's much more information and a full supplies list with pictures over there. And also be sure to click that subscribe button and you'll never miss another video like this one from me. I hope you guys will have a great day and I'll see you very soon. Bye.